Yes, guys, welcome back to the Irish Hotspur. We're joined by Dave and also welcome to Tottenham Manor Solomon. But before I get into it and give you my thoughts on Tottenham's latest new recruit, you Spurs fans have been so good to me, absolutely obliterating that like button of late. So let's aim for another 300. Let's see if we can get that one checked off. But also, if you're new to the channel, welcome. And make sure you do what 10,700 other passionate loyal Spurs fans have done before you and smash that subscribe button. Now, Tottenham have officially announced their fourth signing of this summer transfer window. And that comes, by the way, of Manar Solomon, the Israeli international, has signed a contract until 2028 on Tottenham. That is a five-year contract. Now, there was originally a bit of sort of controversy around this sort of uh, signing with Shaq there coming out about a week ago and saying if Tottenham do end up signing Manar Solomon on a free they will maybe look to sue Tottenham. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of blowback on that. The reason why this one comes about is Solomon shacked their contract was actually due to expire on December 31st, 2023, this year. And he was actually expected to return to Ukraine this, uh, this actual summer after his sort of loan move to Fulham. However, FIFA ruled back in May that... Um, all foreign players based in Ukraine or Russia would be able to suspend their contracts again for a further year. And that is exactly what Manor Solomon has done. And that's why Tottenham are able to bring this guy in on a free. Because if he suspends his contract for another year, well, his release contract is up at the end of this year. So that effectively makes him out of contract. And Tottenham have um, ended up bringing him in because of that. So I'm not going to sit here and say that this is a great piece of business. Because like I explained, it's an opportunistic deal. And I don't think Tottenham would have brought this guy in if there was no fee involved, if it wasn't a free. And look, let's be honest, this signing isn't going to cost too much of a star around the Tottenham fan base, and I fully understand that. However, I do think this sign is a little bit better than maybe what some maybe will give it credit for. When you look at it, we do need reinforcements on the wing with Aaron Art down Juma returning to Villarreal after his loan spell and Tottenham not really showing any interest um, in bringing him back here. And also Lucas Moore leaving on a free this summer after the expiration of his contract. And with Sun going to the Asian Games in January, between uh, January and February, we are going to need options in that forward area. So bringing in Solomon will provide Posta Coglu with them attacking options up in the attacking areas that he does need. Now, the big debate when it sort of comes to Manor Solomon, is this an ambitious signing by Tottenham? Is it ambitious enough? Is the guy good enough to provide competition for places? And look, I do see, I have seen a bit of a narrative out there that he's not good enough. He's only scored a few goals for Fulham at the end of the campaign. What are Tottenham fans raving about? But that's not necessarily the case at all. When it comes to Manor Solomon, he was restricted to 24 appearances over the campaign for Fulham last season, 19 in the Premier League and five in the FA Cup, because after he made his debut, debut on the opening game against Liverpool, the following week he sustained a knee injury in a behind-the-closed-doors friendly that ruled him out until the start of 2023. So that's why no one's heard of what Solomon has done at Fulham up until the, towards the end of the campaign. But once Solomon did get fit, um, he started to hit form uh, February sort of going into March period and was drawn plaudits from everywhere because he scored five goals on the bounce in five consecutive games for Fulham. Now, the first of all, th the first three of them goals, they did come off the bench, including the late winner versus Brighton, leading to many saying he's an impact sub, which at Tottenham, look, let's be real, I can see him playing that sort of role. As Ange does like to make changes to keep it fresh, and to keep his system relentless for 90 minutes. So initially, that will be his role sort of coming in here. But the last two goals that he sort of scored at Fulham, they came when he started against Leeds United and Brentford, which sort of brushes off the impact sort of narrative, I would say. Now, his form also saw him nominated for Premier League Player of the Month alongside Emerson Royale at Tottenham, with both eventually losing out to Marcus Rashford, who was in blistering hot form at that time. All of this, if people want to sort of fact check me, you can find on transfermark.com or those who maybe want to investigate it any further. At Fulham, Solomon predominantly operated on the left wing and he does like to cut in inside. At Fulham, Solomon predominantly operated on the left wing. He does like to cut inside and have a shot. Very, very similar to Sonny. And he does like to sort of drop deep to receive that ball and drive at players, take them on. But I will stress, 
He is not the finished article yet. Now, um, I do think that Manor Solomon does maybe have to add something extra to his game, maybe more goals, a couple more assists, to sort of really reach that next level and sort of really get into Tottenham's first team. But he can also operate on the right and through the middle as I can if needed. So it does give Ange plenty of cover and options right across that forward area. The fact that he is um, in before we head off on preseason on Friday, it gives Ange plenty of sort of time to work with Manor Solomon and gives him the best possible chance to hit the ground running as well, which is all a plus. Now, like I said, some will be missing in January and the end of February, or more or less to the end of February, because he will be representing Korea at the Asian Games. Also, I believe AFCON is on this year as well. So we do need people to sort of fill in. We do need them reinforcements. And um, for me, I think Solomon is a, is a decent sort of um, buy in that regard. Like I said, you know, we've sort of seen what he can be once he got back from his injury at Fulham. Let's see if he can take it to a new level. But also, you know, even if he does come here as an initial impact substitution, what are we moaning? What are we moaning about? Last year under Conte, we looked at the bench. There was a couple of young kids on there that Conte didn't want to use. Or else we had one one or two options. We had bare minimum options in the forward areas. So it is something that we do need. So I don't under, really understand sort of what we're complaining about in that regard. Because well, I can't remember the last time we've had a guy that comes off the bench and makes an impact. Usually guys come off the bench soaking, moaning, this, that and the other. So it'd be nice to have a guy coming off the bench hungry to make that impact. Um, look, some would argue maybe Lucas Moore had done it time to time, this, that, and the other. But you know, I think I think this we, we need we need options in the forward area. Usually they're gonna cost you about 70, 80 million. And look, being very honest, we know Tottenham, it ain't gonna happen. So getting this guy in here, it's one that could either, you know, be a piece of genius business by Tottenham, or one that either sort of, you know, doesn't work out. But either or there's no risk to this whatsoever. What I will say is. Now that Manor Solomon is finally in the door, let's go and bring in a couple of new centre-backs. We are sort of being told that Tapsoba and Van der Ven may well happen this week, the both of them, despite maybe Fabrizio Romano saying both won't happen. So it'll be interesting. Let's wait and see what uh, what sort of happens there. But nonetheless, that's my thoughts on the Manor Solomon deal. Everybody out there that's tuned in, please, most importantly, give me your thoughts in the comment section for me be to, to be able to engage back and forth. Do you think it's a good signing? Is it ambitious enough by Tottenham? Let me know your thoughts. But all I want to say is, welcome to Tottenham, Manor Solomon.